Hey, it's Randy from UC Status. Today I'm going to show you a device that I've been wanting to show you for quite some time, but I actually couldn't be bothered to wait uh, to do a video before I plugged it all in and started using it uh, many months ago when I started to help with the team certification for it. Uh, it is a Logitech device, and it's right here. It is called the Roommate. What is a Logitech Roommate? So the Roommate is uh, effectively an Android-based, for lack of a better word, codec for video meeting rooms. It takes the same Collab OS or Logitech's uh, own branded Android experience uh, from the Rally Bar and the Rally Bar Mini. I've done a video on the Rally Bar before, so I'm not really going to show you a lot about you know the setup experience. I might do another video on that because that has changed drastically over time anyway. But I just wanted to show you the device and what it's all about, kind of what you get with it. So it is a an Android-based codec, uh, sort of a compute basically, um, uh, smallish in stature, about the size of a a normal Intel-based uh, room PC from the likes of Lenovo, uh, Yealink, and so forth and so on, but it runs the Android. Uh, like other Collab OS devices, the Rally Bar, Rally Bar Mini, this gives you a choice of uh, platform vendors to use. So obviously this is a Teams-based YouTube channel, but you know, just in fairness with the other vendors, uh, this supports Microsoft Teams rooms on Android. It also supports Zoom rooms, uh, Ring Central, uh, Pexip, uh, GoToMeeting, and Tencent uh, if you're in the Asia Pacific region. Quite a lot of choice in terms of meeting room platforms. Uh, let's t talk you through the characteristics. So it is designed to either be sat on a shelf uh, or inside of a credenza or something like that. Uh, it's got rubberized feet if you needed to. It's also got some visa mounting holes on the back for a standard size visa if you've got something you can screw uh, into the back um, but it comes with a mounting plate just here with the the visa holes uh, that line up with the actual device itself it also then clips in so you can actually screw it to the wall and then clip it on if you needed to um, you can mount it on the back of a tv screen um, uh, you know whatever so that basically it's really flexible on how you can mount the thing. It also works with the PC mount from Logitech. The Logitech has an accessory called the Compute Mount. It comes in white or, or black, uh, and that works with the Intel Nook uh, on a Windows-based um, uh, video conferencing room, but also it works with this. So you could just use that. That has built-in cable management and such. I don't have one uh, handy right now, so I'm just going to show you this. So this is designed, again, to go on a credenza or on, on a wall using the mounting bracket or on the compute mount. Around the front, you've got some buttons for basically a reset or a kind of a restart. You've got a power button and you've got a Bluetooth button. And, of course, you've got a Kensington lock. If you've got it um, out and, and uh, you don't want it to be stolen, you can use a Kensington lock to secure it in place. On the opposite end is where it's kind of the business end as such. It's got a port for the power. It's got three USB ports. These are all USB-A. It's got an Ethernet port for plugging it into the network. Dual HDMI uh, for uh, uh, displays for your Teams room, Zoom room, etc. And it's got an HDMI in. So a little bit different to the Logitech Teams rooms on Windows where the content ingest port or HDMI in is on the tap touch console. This being an Android experience, the content in or HDMI in is actually on the compute. Same as the Rally Bar and Rally Bar Mini. And this is great for integrators that want to have some sort of dual experience. Some of them will use something, you know, a third party accessory from the likes of Barco, Immersive, Airtame, what have you, and then some sort of switcher, maybe a Kramer box that detects whether you're using the HDMI cable or whether you're using you know, this other solution, for instance, and it'll automatically switch between the two. So it gives you that flexibility. The great thing is, is you don't have to run that solution into the tap uh, console on the table. You can actually run it to the compute up by the display, either in a credenza on the wall, behind the screen, etc. So this works with the Logitech Tap Cat5 
uh, or USB edition. So the USB edition is kind of old hat. It's been superseded by the Cat5 version, which effectively is the USB version with a Cat5 conversion kit inside, which then runs USB over Cat5. Um, and then that will, you know, eventually through Cat5 and power bricks and other Cat5s and converters and things, plug into one of these USB ports. So you can use the standard, you know, tap Cat5 as the touch console for your Teams or Zoom room, etc. Uh, but it also pairs with um, a new uh, device or newish device from Logitech called the Tap IP. So I'll do a separate video on that, but effectively it's the same as other Teams rooms where you pair the device by signing into both devices and then you log in and it pairs with the with the, the Teams room over the network. So it'll work with both. Uh, it gives you great flexibility. Again, this is called Ditch the Box. The box is just there only because I'm setting this up for a customer. But um, effectively, you get the roommate itself. You get a fetching white remote control and a magnetic mount. So you can actually stick it to something or screw it into something, you know, uh, and, and actually hide the remote control on, a, on its own magnetic mount. You get, of course, a power supply and the appropriate uh, end cord for your region. I've got a UK one, clearly. You get this mounting uh you get this mounting bracket it's a kind of metal mounting bracket again it just clips in the back or, or uses those visa holes uh, as i indicated to mount it to the back of the screen and of course you get a setup guide uh, setting it up is straightforward just like any of the logitech products plug it into the network plug it into a screen um, it will guide you through the first instance and actually pairing the remote control in fact, I'll do a video on this anyway, but I'm just kind of describing it now quickly for this um, sort of really simple video that I'm gonna gonna put on the on my channel, just on the device itself. I'll do an out of the box kind of experience in the next video um, because again, it's changed quite a lot. Right. So what's special about the Roommate when it comes to um, room PCs? Obviously, you've got Teams rooms on Windows, and that uses a Nook or a Lenovo kind of small form factor PC that runs the Teams Room application, connects to a touch console, and connects to in-room audio and video from the vendor of your choice. So when Microsoft originally came out with the Teams Rooms on Android thing, it was originally called Collab Bar because that's really all it was meant for. It was for collaboration. It was going to be a small form factor bar paired with some sort of remote control, or you could use it with a touch screen or a keyboard with a trackpad, that sort of thing. Um, over the time, um, you know, Microsoft came out with a touch console experience. Most of the vendors came out with a, uh, a companion device that you'd sign into with the same account as the bar, uh, and then you'd pair them over the network. Logitech did it slightly differently, and they, they kind of paired the device with their original tap console. Now they got the tap IP to be like everyone else where you pair the devices over the network. So really what's happened with the Collab Bar is over time, the developers at Microsoft has seen fit to actually add features. So originally it was a pretty cut down experience. Now there's only a few things um, that are missing on, on the Teams rooms on Android when you compare it to the Windows Teams rooms. Um, and that, that gulf is getting smaller and smaller all the time. A few things that come to mind as differences between Windows and Android based Teams rooms uh, obviously, you got content camera, so that's that magic whiteboard experience. Uh, Logitech used the Scribe. There's also the the Brio or some cameras from Hudley or or Yealink or whatever that you point at a whiteboard and it you know ghosts you out and you can bring that analog whiteboard experience into the digital realm. Uh, that's one, uh, and I, I'm I'm assured that that will be coming before long. Another thing would be multiple cameras. Um, that, you know, I'm told will also come uh, in the fullness of time. Don't have any timelines on it or anything, but those sort of things will come. And there's other things like, you know, the front row layout. I can only imagine that will come in the fullness of time. But suffice it to say, Microsoft is working really hard on the Android experience to try and make it catch up with what's available on Windows. Uh, there will always be differences, I believe, uh, just because of you know, ways you can do things on Android versus Windows. And there might actually be, you know, just guessing here, but there might actually be things that will come to Android 
that are harder to bring to Windows or they just won't come to Windows for whatever reason. So, you know, and that's what that's done really is it's presented customers with a lot of choice where they didn't have much before. Generally speaking, if you wanted something for a small collaboration room or huddle space or something, that was your MTR on Android. You know, cut down feature set, got you into a meeting, and and, and that was about it. Whereas if you wanted, you know, full-fledged uh, room with lots of controls, uh, but also then the ability to, to add complexity and complex audio, multiple cameras, and all those sort of things, that took you into the Windows world. Um, you know, as I said, originally call-out bars were these small form factor bars, you know, not really suitable for much more than a couple of people in a room. Um, and then over time, you know, the, the bars themselves became bigger and more capable with bigger and more capable cameras. And obviously the Rally bar, that came along and it's effectively the same camera from the, from the Rally uh, range uh, glued into a bar that has onboard speakers and microphones and really can fill a room with with audio you can add you know up to four mic pods and and really what's what you're doing is you're pushing the capabilities of a bar and putting it into a medium sized and dare I say it even large size room but where it kind of cuts off really is you know there's there's an onboard camera a multi camera you know that probably will come to to something like the, the rally bar i would imagine as soon as microsoft add that capability uh, but also Zoom and others. Um, but, you know, if you want to add, you know, more complex audio for, you know, ceiling tile audio from the likes of Shure, Biamp, and QSC, maybe ceiling speakers, maybe that's more appropriate to your space. Maybe it's a much larger space that that isn't really um, suitable for just the onboard uh, speakers in the bar itself. Maybe you don't have enough uh, range with the mic pods on the table or on the ceiling that Logitech can offer. And then another thing, what about divisible spaces where you get these kind of three in one boards, boardroom spaces that have that concertina door that, that divides the space into its little constituent parts. Generally speaking, people will have, you know, meeting room hardware in each of those spaces. When the space is closed, the audio basically becomes isolated to each of those individual rooms. But when you open it up, you want to use the audio and even the video, maybe even the screens from all three of those uh, uh, spaces. And that's where, you know, it kind of really comes into that complex audio. Uh, people like Shure, Bryant, QSC can actually deliver. Um, you know, the bars are meant to be all in one. They've got onboard microphones. They've got the ability to do their own mic pods and stuff, which is all well and good. Um, but what happens when you need, you know, more complex and more sophisticated audio to overcome, you know, room challenges, echo, reverb, maybe you want to shape the audio and ignore a certain space. That's where that, those, those high-end audio solutions really come into their own. Well, with this, as I said, it's got the three onboard USB ports. All you need is that DSP connected to that, uh, the audio in the room, and then it's just that single USB connection from the DSP over to the to the solution itself and then you've got some big room very sophisticated audio that works on a Teams rooms on Android which for me is the kind of better bet easier to manage and, and, and so forth and so on and as I said that feature set is just getting better and better uh, and will catch up and potentially even overtake Windows anyway it just means you've got some choice you can use the Android simplicity and the feature set there you don't have to worry about managing a Windows compute, but you're not you're not pigeonholed into using it for a small or medium room. You can use it for as large or as complex a room as you absolutely want. So that's where devices like the Roommate will come in. And the Roommate is the first certified uh, Teams rooms on Android standalone codec um, kind of thing. The only other one that I know of that is still going through certification is one from Poly. It's the G7500. Um, but yeah, very important devices when it comes to Teams rooms and Android. Again, taking it from that small collab huddle space or even medium room, you know, kind of with everything all, all on board into those more complex and more sophisticated spaces thanks to the, the ability to plug in 
any audio and, and virtually any video into the device as well, as long as it's presented by USB. A lot of companies have meeting rooms where they'll put a webcam or some sort of audio solution, maybe an all-in-one bar, such as the Meetup, um, or you know, other some sort of some other kind of AV bar. But what they're designed for is bring your own device, or effectively you plug in some cables into your laptop, you bring your own meeting, and away you go. Um, well, what happens when a company wants to get a little bit more serious and start to utilize the simplicity of maybe Microsoft Teams rooms with that single touch join experience where you invite the room and it becomes kind of a, a, another participant in the, in, the, in the meeting and things like that. You could, of course, you know, go and, you know, size the audio and video for the, the space and, you know, go and buy a full fledged uh, Teams rooms on Windows or something like that. You can, of course, replace everything with, you know, a bar style uh, device. But if you've taken the time to actually scope the video and audio for the room and the solution you've got in there is good enough and it's just USB, well, that's where this kind of device comes in. If those are good enough for that room and you're happy with the uh, performance of the video and the audio in that space, add this. So what you've done basically is upgraded that space into a Microsoft Teams room using a really inexpensive codec. Uh, looking at the site now, these are £899 in the UK, so pretty cheap for considering what they are. Um, you pair this with a touch console, either the TAP um, uh, Cat5, as I've explained, or the TAP IP, you know, for, for a little over a grand or something like that. You've got, you know, a codec effectively and a meeting room controller, and you plug it into the existing audio and video that you've already spent time and money on in that space, and then suddenly you've upgraded into a much better experience for users. So that's, again, where these kind of standalone codecs come in to upgrade those spaces that were only used occasionally or used for BYOD, and uh, you can upgrade them to a Teams room, Zoom room, etc. And that's it. That's my high-level take on the Logitech Roommate. Stay tuned for more videos on some companion devices, the Tap IP being one of them, uh, and a bunch more besides. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.